Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly podcast where two old internet vets talk about technology, the internet, where it's going to shit, and what we do to fix it. I'm Jason. And I'm Brian. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash grumpyoldgeeks, on Twitter at GOG Podcast, or on the web at grumpyoldgeeks.com. Or you can email us at podcast at grumpyoldgeeks.com, and now you can also subscribe to us on iTunes. Just search for Grumpy Old Geeks. De plane, de plane. <laughs> Back in the flight path. Yes, we are. Um, I've had a dog problem recently. At least the dogs aren't barking. Who let the dogs out? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I might have to use that as a music segment, though. Okay, go for it. I, dude, I'm fucked up out of my gourd on DayQuil today, so I have been sick all week. Have you? Okay, so you're messed up, and I'm messed up because I've had a crazy work day and been running around and looked at 75 to 85 emails in my inbox. So this should be an interesting podcast. Well, you need to listen to some Merlin Man action. Inbox zero, brother. I used to have Inbox Zero. It doesn't seem to be possible anymore. Type faster. Fuck. Filter. <laughs> Come on. Uh, as fast as I type, my clients type faster. And as you know, if you ignore an email and let it sit for a while, they will solve their own problem. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So Inbox 75 is about my new reality. Okay. Yeah, we figured that out when uh, my partner and I were running uh, MetBlogs, our, our blog network, that... You know, problems left to themselves, unlike Murphy's Law says, will tend to go away because people will figure it out. When you take away the teat of knowledge, yes. people tend to like get off their ass and figure shit out for themselves. Yes. The problem is I'm, I'm really big on immediate response. I mean, that's kind of what I figure my clients are paying me for. But I have definitely discovered that sitting and waiting 10 to 15 minutes tends to take care of a lot of problems. Yes. So that's and my new rule about responding to emails. Well, and, and as in this day and age, as budgets decrease, response time should increase. Oh, I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, add a zero, then you can, you know. Yeah, add a zero, <laughs> and I will write you back immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to say, uh, I want to uh, throw one out for my homie, uh, Roger Ebert, who left us today. Thumbs down. I know. On this news. Yeah. I was, I was amazed at how he came back from his, you know, his surgeries and... Just I, I I lost track of him for ages, and I used to watch the show, you know, religiously because I'm from Chicago. I think we all did too. Yeah, I mean, this was the day of, of three channels. Anyways. Yes, yeah. so yeah. Uh, we all watched that. That was there was no uh, rotting tomatoes. There was none of this stuff. Yeah. So that's where we found out about movies. And what I really loved about him is he kind of did a George Takei. He was one of these older guys that just embraced the internet and ran with it. And Especially given all the things that he was dealing with. I mean, he couldn't speak anymore. Yeah. So he had to type to get his words out. And um, amazing guy. Yeah. Amazing guy. And he wrote Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, which is one of the greatest films ever made. I, I actually have never seen it. Oh, my God. Don't watch it alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, who should I watch it with? Someone. Someone that you can hug and go, ah, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> it is not the movie you... So not you. Uh, no. No, okay. No. No, just checking. Yes, there are. Um, oh, what? Uh, what's the guy that did all the the big titty movies? Corman. Corman. Yes, it's in that vein. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I've read up on it. I've just never actually seen the movie, and yeah, I do know that he's kind of revered for it, and it's one of those. Well, like one of the bands that I really like, um, old school industrial band out of Chicago as well. My life with a thrill kill cult mm -hmm. used to use a lot of you know quotes from his stuff, and you know back before you got nailed for sampling. In your music, and definitely on the live shows, they always had the clips going on in the background, most of which were probably from that movie or Corman. So, yep, yeah, yeah, all oh, the old days. <laughs> so, yeah, we are getting old, aren't we? We're, we're starting to reach back to the past because things were actually better. I'm starting to really think so, man. And <laughs> I was listening to something this week about uh, cell phones and attention, and I just kept thinking back about the old days when we didn't have computers in our pocket, always on. And, I mean, our, our biggest tech when it came out was a pager. Yes. And that was perfect. Yeah. You know, then you pull over. You would get a notice somebody <laughs> wanted to hear from you. Yeah, you pull over, find a payphone, make a call. Yeah. You know? Well, immediate response is expected now. Yeah. If, so, if I text somebody, I expect a response. If somebody IMs you, I mean, all these things, it's... It's it's wonderful when you first start dealing with it because you think how great it is. But I definitely notice, and I'm somebody that actually even tries to put limits on things, but I find myself, if I know I have a text message, I need to fucking check it. I can't wait. Like when we do this podcast, I put my phone out of sight because, and I have to bring down my email and I have to close my IM window because I'm incapable of not paying attention. 
I think we all are as humans. It's just, it, but it's not healthy. No, I, and I think I am is the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> I mean, even even the cell phone thing, you know, now you can't well, go out with Well, nobody IMs anymore. I am so old school. It's it's all text messaging. It's now. all I do. That's all kids do. All I do is I am well, all day long. You're too old. I, know. Well, then the I, I have are. next to nobody on my IM window anymore. It's like you, and that's about it. Okay, that's why it takes you so long <laughs> to get back to me. Yeah, I, I hardly ever notice it, but, but texting is rampant. That's what everybody does now. Even my clients text me, and I'm like, don't text me. Because I can't keep a record of that. Email me so I can send this back to you later when you yell at me and I, I can prove that I'm right. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You should never give them your actual cell number. Give them your Google Voice number that's tied to your cell phone because uh, then there's a record on Google Voice of everything that happens. Never thought about that. I don't have Google Voice. Go get it. Ten bucks. Yeah, I think I'll be doing that tomorrow. Yeah. I got a, I got a 213 number <laughs> on there, which is hard to come by nowadays. Oh, that was on the Today Show earlier. It People, was? Uh, because apparently Vonage is petitioning the government to open up to get all kinds of uh, area codes and stuff like that. So Because yeah. area codes is still a big deal. But is it really? When was the last time you – well, actually, when's the last time you even really knew somebody's phone number? We just put it into our cell phones now under their name. I couldn't tell you – anybody's recently their phone number. I know my parents' number because they've had it since I was born. It, I don't know your phone number. I don't I know yours. You. Yeah. yeah. And I used to, that was one of my claims <laughs> to fame. Somebody could tell me their phone number once and I would remember it for 10 years. Well, seven digits. That's the way the brain works. That's the limit, apparently. Well, it's On a string 10. of numbers. 10. So, well, 10. Yeah. I traveled a lot, so, <laughs> you know, I had to hold, know, know the yes. whole thing. Yeah, that's a. I mean, I remember studies about that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. that that was the limit on what you could actually really remember as a human. You could ping on that, but really, I, I'm 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 going through my mind right now trying to figure out if there's any one of like my top ten friends where I actually could tell you their phone number. No, I can't. I not, mean, I, I know I know my mom's number. I know my dad's number. But again, that's kids. Yeah, we were kids. Yep, and yeah, as soon as as soon as. You got a phone, and the phone had an address book. Done. Yeah, you you could free up that part of your mind, and you know at that part, I'm not sad about not ha- not knowing people's numbers because it's it's a convenience and it leaves my brain open for other things. Do I use it for anything more productive? That's you know, I don't right. know about that. Okay, but there's also the flip side of that, which just came to mind right now, which is iTunes and music and things like that. We don't remember track names. We don't know song names anymore. Oh, shit, a lot of people don't. That. You you played the song and you know, oh, that, that, that third or fourth one is really, really good. But you don't know the name anymore because you don't study album art because it's just in this player. And you go, oh, I like I like track four. What yeah. the fuck is track four? Yeah, no more <laughs> liner notes because when you used to get an album, you'd read the liner notes, you'd read the lyrics yeah. along with the songs, get to know the songs. You'd memorize the song names. You'd be You'd be looking at the artwork while the album was playing. So you'd be like, oh, yeah, this and this and this. Song names are gone. Album titles are gone. Nobody really kind of even remembers that. Oh, my God. Yeah, I go by the picture in iTunes now. Yeah. And it's funny. I've, I've had this Rise Against album that I've been listening to for a year now. Literally, when I go to work, I put it on loop, and I listen to the same album over and over again. I couldn't tell you one track name on that album. <laughs> and I, can, I don't think I can tell you the name of the album. <laughs> this is a sign of something a lot bigger. I mean, this is, this is why... People don't care about music anymore and why people don't care about these things. You don't have the investment anymore. It's such a throwaway commodity now. You don't even remember the song title. You just know you like it. Yep. It's three or four and you'll just skip through and find it. There's no investment. Well, I mean, in the old days, you, you knew when the records were coming out because you'd go to the record store and they'd have the board that had yeah. the dates that the records would come out. You'd get out of school. You and your buddies would hop in the car, drive over to the record store. Everyone would buy it. Then you'd go, you know, if you had, if you were lucky enough to have a car with a CD player, which I wasn't, you know, I had, I had cassettes <laughs> in my car, and then you'd, you'd you'd all go listen to it, and you know, well, I talk was, about it. And I was friends with all the employees that worked at the record store because I was in there so often, and they would have the board of their recommendations, and that's how I found new bands, you know. And I bought these magazines obsessively to find out, you know, I was a total Anglophile when I was a kid, so everything I was listening to was coming out of England, and there was no internet. I couldn't just, like, find out about stuff. It, it came through magazines and, like, the really hot chick that worked at Tower Records with the tattoo on her shoulder that I wanted to get to know real bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember her name. I think it was Shannon or something. She had a Jesus Jones tattoo on her shoulder. Oh, and I was like, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and 
God bless him, my buddy uh, Mike Vinicor. Uh, check him out, uh, punkvault.com. Mm-hmm. He maintains his entire living room is vinyl. He's got racks and racks and racks of vinyl. And still, like when he goes to another so you, town, he goes do, to record stores. You do lose me on the vinyl stuff. Well, I, he, I think he's more of an archivist. But when he no, plays that, them, when he cool. plays them, yeah. they sound incredible. Like if you put yeah. a CD on versus the vinyl, it sounds amazing. I mean, for me, I'm stone cold deaf, so it, uh, the nuance is lost on me, and I really don't care that right. much. But you know, it just it just reminds me of how things kind of used to be, and it was it was I I think we lost something with all this. We we've definitely lost something. I mean. Again, just going back to even not even knowing your friend's phone numbers anymore. Yep. You just push a button. You don't know track names. You don't know anything. It, it's a different world now. And I don't necessarily – a lot of the world is better. We see all these sorts of things happening on Twitter and blah, 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 blah. You know, regimes fall, whatever. But we've lost uh, – there's a bit of romance that's been lost. Oh, a huge amount of romance. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is immediate and throwaway, and we don't cherish things the way that we used to. It's a vapid, vapid world now. Oh, vapid.com. Don't go there. <laughs> Today's podcast is fueled by Flying Dog Brewery. We're drinking Gonzo Imperial Porter today with, well, a little bit of Jameson. So, for spice. For spice. Yes. Gotta have a chaser. <laughs> I gotta say, the Gonzo's pretty good. It, it's nice. It's a, it's, yeah. And the artwork is fantastic. Ralph Steadman, you can't beat that. Yeah. So, you get something nice to look at while you're drinking your beer. And uh, I do have to appreciate Brian's taste because he has been buying all the beer because I have to commute to come here. So that's the deal. I I drive the car. He buys the beer. That's true. That is the deal. And I do wait an appropriate amount of time before driving home. Yes. Nobody nobody drive drunk. We're not supporting that. So uh, have you seen the Google Reader uh, dust up? I know that the Google shut down Reader. Well, they're shutting it down. It's coming. Oh, okay. Um, I think think it's July that they're shutting it down. Right. Are you a Google Reader user? No, I was never a big RSS guy. Um, I've never really kind of done that. Um, I've put it on all my sites because apparently a lot of people are. But uh, no, I've never used that. Um, I'm not a fan of aggregators. I I like to find things organically. Why do you hate the Internet? Uh, Because I've worked in it for 20 years, Jason. Uh, Do you... uh, (laughs) Do you hate serendipity or, um, or you love serendipity? That's it. I love yes, serendipity. Yes. yes. Okay. I like, I like, you know, if there was a version of that, that I would like, it's probably stumble upon, which I don't even know how well that does or, and I've never used it, but I, I like randomly running into things. I don't use Google reader. I don't use RSS aggregators. I don't do that. Okay. So. By the way, stumble upon is fantastic. I love it. Is it really? Oh, okay. I, 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 I should stumble probably upon. give it a run. And if you put your content in there, you can get some serious traffic out of it. I, I put content in there. I put my, uh, this is the weird fucking bizarre thing about me is I know about all of these things for my clients and I use them for my clients. I just don't personally use them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, well, the Google reader stuff brought up a bunch of uh, just blog posts from everybody screaming, oh, why won't they let me pay for Wait, it? What if are this these blog paid? things? Yeah, we'll get back to blogs. They're the things you that you Tumblr? They, no, blogs are the things you read in Google Reader. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Tumblr, where the porn is. God bless Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> Best free porn on the internet. <laughs> Except for 500 uh, PX, which got pulled from the App Store. I don't know if they're back Not yet. Not aware of that either. Oh, it's a photo God, sharing. I'm it's sorry. a photo sharing site for oh. high quality photography. Oh, HQ News then. Uh, it's it's very. Uh, you can see every ripple in that fold. Yes, you can. Every every <laughs> zit on the ass shows. <laughs> but back to back sorry. to what I was saying. <laughs> um, the thing about the thing about the Google Reader dust up is people were missing the point that it wasn't about paid software versus free software, and and Google was just shutting it down because it was you know not making money. Well, it was just it, – it took away resources that they could use for things that made them more money right. is, is pretty much what I, what I gathered from the team. And they never liked it. Uh, Jason Shellen was on the original Google Reader team who's a friend of mine that I know back from the blogger days. And he, he basically helped start that thing. And he's got, he's got some really good uh, insight on it. There will be some links in the show notes to, to his take on what happened. Okay. Um, but what I think what really came out of the conversation about Google Reader was – this idea of you have to pay for something if you want it to stay. So, and, and nobody and, pays for anything on the internet, Jason. That is so not true. <laughs> so Stupid not true. people pay for things on the well, internet. Well, then I Jason. must be a fucking idiot because I pay for 
tons of stuff. I've got. No, but we're old school. We we understand, and and we're creators on the internet, and we work on the internet, and we understand what's involved in building things for the internet, and the time, and the effort, and all of that. That's why we pay for things on the internet. But why should anybody else who doesn't understand that pay when they know they can get it for free? Well, you can't get Basecamp for free. You can't get you can't get Beanstalk for free. You These know? are services that a layperson would never use. I bet most of the people that I know and who are lay lay people on the internet. Lay people. Excuse me, beer. Uh, they uh, flying dog. They calls. They use Basecamp at work. I mean, right. But quite, doesn't but their saying, office pay the, for that then? Doesn't their their right? Their, but it's it's a it's a paid service. Right. So you know, yes. I, every major studio that I've worked with in the past two years, yes. You know, from Disney to Sony to NBC, they all use Basecamp. Right. So they pay for it. So that's a paid service. You know. Well, Basecamp is doing quite well, even it's, though I think that there, it's not the best. It, it's a nightmare to navigate. I don't quite get it, but the new version is pretty nice. Okay. I got to give them that. Uh, but you pay for hosting. So you have websites, you pay for hosting. Uh, uh, you know. Bandwidth. Yes, bandwidth. Yes. And I host in all my client sites. I pay for hosting, I pay for server fees, I pay for upgrades, I pay for everything. Bandwidth. Do you do, you yeah. do online accounting? Yes. So who do you use for your online accounting? Um, Harvest or one of those guys? No, I'm actually just using Quicken and QuickBooks. So. Do, you, do you have to pay for your online access to that? Uh, I have to pay a certain monthly fee for the... For QuickBooks and Quicken to connect to my banks, which okay. is a load of crap, because <laughs> I, I would have paid to go into my banks. This is doesn't involve anything, so why am I getting nine ninety five a month? Because somebody's got to make money to pay for the service to build it. Exactly. You know, so I mean, <laughs> I pay for my Beanstalk account, which I mean, just just that's source control management mm-hmm. and uh, deploying from your source control to your servers. It's you know, it's a geek thing, but for me. It's worth 15 bucks a month right. for me not to have to go write that. And this is one of the things I want you to teach me about. Yes. Because I'm will. still very old school with my source code. Yes. You dash old dot <laughs> HTML. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly this, what I In mean. this day and age, you still <laughs> know source control. So, and, but GitHub, same thing. I, yeah. So I have, I have a Beanstalk account and a GitHub account. And yes. GitHub is different, but we'll get into GitHub. But okay. uh, I pay for Netflix. Well, actually, I used to. I just canceled my Netflix account. I canceled account. Netflix about three years ago, but I'm about to renew because of uh, Arrested Development. Yeah. So. Um, but there are things that you know you pay for that are that are good services, but there are also things that you can get for free, and then they do upsells on you. Yes. So the lay, the lay user, yes, the freemium model, the lay user can come in, get a taste. Like Flickr, you get 100 photos. It's like the first taste is free, you know, it's just like a drug dealer. Yeah. And if you really want to stick with the stick with the little baggies, then you pay a little extra. Yes. Um, and a lot of services use that now, like Dropbox, Evernote. Um, Most apps know. are freemiums. Hmm? A lot of apps on, on your iPhone or iPad are freemiums now. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's the model like with them. Like my app last week that I talked about, uh, TripIt, mm-hmm. is, there's a free version and then... There's the pay version. Yes, so. and I mean, but especially with games. Yes. Games is the, well, the way to go. I'm never a gamer. I've never been a gamer. Um, the last game I think I really was into was Spy Hunter, the arcade version. <laughs> so this one got nothing on. Speaking of games, though, if uh, <laughs> if you, if you want to throw or marathon, down, of course, well, yes. Yeah. If, if you're a gamer on the iPhone, you want to throw down my uh, my gamer handle on Game Center is JP Def. <laughs> I will school your ass at Subway Surfers any day of the week. Subway Surfers, um, at Finn McCool's at Trivia Night uh, two weeks ago, on my team, Fergal, his daughter, who is 11 years old, grabbed my iPhone and asked, can I use this, please? And that's the game she downloaded. Yeah. So it's now on my iPhone. I, I've never played it. Well, if you ever do, I will school you. Okay. <laughs> well, I think she might kick your ass. <clears throat> Not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, the freemium model. Like my, people think this is a new thing. We were doing freemium way back in the day. My first company, or the thing that I built from scratch, blogrolling.com, that yes. was a freemium service. You know, so was it? Yeah. I could have paid you? I yeah, kind of I, feel bad about that. Now. You should have paid me. <laughs> no, the, the basic service had, you know, just the basic level of share your links and all that stuff, you know. And then I added little cool things where it would take all your mm-hmm. links and it would make shapes out of them. <laughs> so you could have <laughs> triangles, inverted triangles and all this stuff. So when your links showed up on your site... Right. But it was uh, it was a thirty dollar flat fee. You right. PayPal'd me, and that was for life. One time for life. Yeah, and uh, is it still up there? 
blog rolling is sadly dead. Okay. I, I ended up selling the company to two cows, and uh, they killed it after many years. <laughs> I, although I hear it was very big in the gay porn community after I left. They, they used it a lot. Triangles. <laughs> ah, yes, the inverted <laughs> triangle. Um, but then you get like to your basic free services, which nowadays are either social networks who yes. are selling your information – in ways you can't even possibly understand. Yeah, you're the you're the you're the commodity on there. Yes. Um, and I think besides that, most of the free services are people that are trying to find a business model that have gone from VC funding or angel funding, and are just throwing it out there until they can figure out how to make money. Like, oh, say Twitter. That's how that started. Everybody's I mean, just waiting to sell to Google. Somebody, I, I want I want somebody to explain to me Pinterest how they're making money. Oh, wait, they're not. <laughs> they're not, but they are captivating an incredibly valuable and good demographic, which is single mothers, 34-year-old mothers, work-at-home mothers, um, basically no, older just, women. No, just women in general. Women. No, it's a women's yes. thing. If you're a dude on Pinterest, I'm sorry. And, and I know some dudes on Pinterest. There are some dudes on Pinterest. I'm sorry. I don't understand why you're there. And also, I don't understand why brands go on there. I think Pinterest is, is quite possibly the, the world's worst offender of copyright infringement that, is, that we've ever oh, seen. it's beyond that. That we've ever seen. All you're doing is stealing things from around the internet and putting it up on your page so everybody can find it there. No accreditation. Yep, no there, nothing. No, there, there are link backs. Oh, yeah. Links okay, back. I, but who has ever... You link didn't back, ask my permission. Linkbacks are barely even in WordPress anymore because it's just fucking died. Oh, well, you're talking about trackbacks. That's oh, different. Trackbacks, trackbacks are – I can do an entire episode on trackbacks. <laughs> I wrote a, a literal 13-page treatise on how trackbacks were such a bad idea because it was going to be used for spam, and I sent it to Ben Trot when he put the spec out. <laughs> and nobody heeded my advice, and now it's a giant spam magnet. This but, is why we're grumpy old geeks. Yeah. Nobody pays attention to us. So, but the accreditation on Pinterest doesn't matter. Nobody ever goes back to the original source site. Nobody no. ever cares. You look at it there, that's it. Although there is a subset of people that use Pinterest to make money by posting pictures. What? what, what? People who are using affiliate links, posting funny pictures, putting the using the accreditation or, you know, the, the right. credit the credit link. Yeah. Posting back to their Amazon page or a, a pass through to a different affiliate. Well, those, some of these, some those, those are what we call the smart people. Well, so some of those work-at-home scams yeah. are basically teaching people how to do this. And they're like, I made $30 today using Pinterest by only spending 15 minutes posting shit that I stole from somebody else to fake people into going to shit to buy that they don't need. If somebody told me that all I would make is $30 for the entire day, I wouldn't even get out of bed. 15 minutes, though. So if you spent the entire day doing it? Right. But then you – I don't want to go into the, the mechanics of that because I don't want to give people bad ideas. Because, yeah, this is a bad idea. Yeah. And, you know, just going back to like how, how all these services work, I mean, most of the paid stuff you can't do yourself from home. No. The freemium stuff, yeah, if you're a programmer and a designer and you have a team, the free – I mean, most of these things are company. This is all like company-based money-making. Well, let, let's, let's talk some of the reality about money about this. Because this is something that's come up recently in, in my work world about how much an app actually costs to create. Okay. Now, obviously, there's a huge scale of apps. But I've heard from, from friends of mine that our app developers were 200000 100000 bare minimum $50,000 to build an app. Okay. Even as a freemium. So somebody at home? No, putting I, in the well, effort to do this and and how, well, what's let, the let, app me, and let me ask you: How yeah. much does a website cost to make? It's the same same metric, same, same sliding fuzzy scale. sliding scale, yes. complexity. Yes, you know, and design complexity, and, reach. What do you want it to do? Do you need it to be functional? Are you going to sell things? And if you're going to sell things, yeah. what? E-commerce. And how? And e-commerce is such a fucking black art still. Oh, it's getting way better. But it is getting better. Yeah. But. Check out check out Stripe if you want to see how good it's gotten. Oh, I'll tell you Stripe that. is. Put that in the show notes. I wish Stripe was there from the beginning because I have built so many e-commerce integrations that I never want to do one again until I saw these guys. I would love to never see Authorized.net again. Oh my God, Authorized fucking net! Talk about the bane of every programmer's existence. <laughs> oh, I've had to deal with those guys so many times, and they are such a shit pile. 
yeah, worst worst company. But for in a the long world. time, that was that was the fucking giant gorilla, mm-hmm. and then you could do PayPal, but that would be shit. And- I've done great PayPal integrations. I got to say, mm-hmm. I've done I because we've gone through. This is getting a little off topic, but I just <laughs> want to say. Uh, this is. I, I have to say, this podcast is powered by Dayquil and yes. Jameson, so it's going to be a long bit, fucking work day. Terrible long work day. So, but I want to just want to say that you know some of the PayPal integrations I've done have been very successful. They mm-hmm. charge a little bit more than the credit card companies, yeah. but they work. But ease of use and the fact that PayPal is the devil. They freeze. A, they they froze my friend's account for weeks, it, like his actual bank account. They yeah. called his bank and froze his account, and there was no recourse. I mean, they are, they're like the, well, I can the tell a story about know? authorized.net that doesn't make them much better. Okay. Um, I signed, I used to run, this is on topic, free versus Femi and, <laughs> yeah. and iPad. Uh, I've, I've run a number of, of artist fan clubs, pay mm-hmm. fan clubs. And I was running one for a spectacularly successful band and, and we just decided to launch it. And it was the best album of their entire career. This was the, one of the biggest, Biggest fucking albums ever. So not Weird Al. We launched the fan club with Authorized.net. The day we launched, over dollars of orders. Oh, you hit, you hit every red flag in the book. Never mentioned that there was a cutoff on how many people they would take. They just shut it off in the middle of the middle of the day while people were trying to sign up, and we lost probably another dollars worth of orders. Wow! And those people never came back. No, yeah. But they never mentioned that there was a cutoff. Yeah. Yeah, it's evil. <laughs> but they didn't freeze your bank account and keep you out of the money. They didn't freeze the bank account, but they they cut off all orders for a week. Yeah. No new orders for a week. Yeah, that's <laughs> you, you you should have sued them for that. Probably should have. Not yeah. probably, you should have yeah. sued them. Well, that's where the intricacies of what we do for a living gets very bizarre. Management companies yeah. Lawyers on both sides. Who gets to who sue? Gets to sue? Who gets yeah. what? Yes. <laughs> oh man. Um, so yeah, we've come a long way in payments. Is all I got to say. Just yeah. check out Stripe. Stripe. I think it's yeah. Stripe. dot com. Yeah. Um, they take all the pain out of it. <laughs> Perfect APIs. Um, so getting back to the rest of the yeah. this stuff. People at home, it's you know, like me or you, just want to sit down and build something. We've never touched a computer before. I think that's what partially started the blogging craze besides the huge amount of narcissism in the, in the world and everybody <laughs> wants to have their 15 minutes. Um, cause even today you can start a blog on a topic, build an audience, start selling advertising, start selling eBooks, maybe do a podcast and make money at it. It's, it's much harder than it used to be, mm-hmm. but you can do it now, but just, you know, be, know that there's this giant blog fatigue in the world because we beat it into the ground for 10 years and every smarmy marketer has been down that road already. Well, but I think it's yeah. still a viable way to make money if, well, if you have the time and the patience and the... And you're interesting. The, the, yeah, and the knowledge base and... It comes down to write. content again. Yeah. So, I mean, the tools are there. I, I don't disagree with you about that. And I, I do think there is blog fatigue. I'm tired of hearing about what people have to say. I mean, you and I can talk about Twitter and how we both hate that. And it's, it's that immediate 120 characters just like, (laughs) and there's a lot of that with Facebook too. I mean, as much as I love Facebook, um, and I I love doing my updates and and all of that. Um, but the blogging thing is, is, is long form. It's a long form experience. If you want it to be, obviously everybody abuses it. And it's it's the world of telemarketers and scamming and all that kind of bullshit. But uh, but for people that I can actually write and are interesting. But I some of my friends are incredible writers, and I don't go to their blogs. Well, we live in a world of TLDR. Yeah, you know, too long didn't read. Yep, exactly. And I I, I want to say whoever can you that, while you can. I want to punch in somebody in the face <laughs> for that for that saying. It's like you know what somebody took the time to write it. If it's a subject you're interested in, relax, take a breath, and enjoy it, and take it in, and don't go with the the summarized version of but it. But I'm somebody who even prides myself on that, and I know there are 15 to 25 of my friends that write amazing blogs, and I never read them. 
Yeah. Because I don't have the time because we're all getting pushed and pulled to this bullshit insanity quickly. Well, that's why are people listening to us? You know, it's like the same. Well, same we're long form. I'm hoping we are long. I don't think people are listening to us. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Make sure you subscribe on and iTunes. Give us a five star, please. And give us a rating. If you're actually listening to this and like it, please say <laughs> something because we don't know. Yep. And and I feel bad for a lot of my friends, and it's always on my to-do list. Like There are a couple of my friends that I know write amazing blogs, and mm-hmm. I see sometimes their updates in my feeds, and I'm like, i got to go read that. Um, Which is why Google Reader, I'm kind of like... I need some kind of service. Well, that's Evernote, I'm, right? No, I'm going to tell you exactly. I know exactly what you need. Okay. What and do this I need? goes this goes into one person who knew how to code, makes money on the internet. Okay. Marco Arment, Instapaper. He created Instapaper by himself. Okay. For reading things later. That's what it's oh, for. It's a read later need. service. Because bookmarking doesn't work for me anymore. Because no. I have ten thousand bookmarks. You never use Instapaper? No. Oh my god, it's the best thing ever. You basically you get a little bookmarklet in your in your favorites bar, a little piece of a little JavaScript bookmarklet. You click on it, it saves the page to your Instapaper account, then you get the Instapaper app on your iPad and you read it in the shitter. That sounds fantastic. It that is, is exactly what I need. Yeah. Because there are so many things that just flash across and how do you save it and know to come back to it later? That's I mean it's it's there there are a couple other read later services, but mm-hmm. His was the first and the best. Okay. And he, you know, and his backends in PHP and MySQL. Good for you, Marco. Is he doing freemium? Um, I believe the Back on no, topic. no, it is it is freemium. Yes. Okay. Well, the iPad, the iPad, and the iPhone app. Yeah. Cost money because Good. those cost money, and that's why. I and paid it for should it. because yes. he he obviously has built something fantastic, and he pro- mm-hmm. he puts a lot of time and effort into it, and I'm sure he does support and all those sorts of things. Yes, and he should be fucking paid for it, and he drives a BMW for it. So good for him. There you I go. have I have I do not begrudge him one bit for the success he's had, right. because he's busted his ass and he's made a great product. Right, and so the 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 main service, if you just want to use it on the web, is free. Mm-hmm. He's got a couple upsells for subscriptions, so you can subscribe to a blog that gets pulled into your, you know, your feed automatically. I believe. I believe that's what subscriptions are. I never checked it out because right. I don't use that. But I paid for paid for the app when it first came out, mm-hmm. and he's had great success with it and totally freemium, I believe. So, but either way, that's going to solve your problem. <laughs> and I think it the, might. Yeah, it's just instapaper.com. Greatest, one of my greatest tools. First so, thing I'm going to do after we're done with this. We'll put that in the show notes for sure. <laughs> um, but going back to blogging a bit. Yes. Um, I, the, the whole blog thing, I, I went through the whole blog up and down. I mean, I started blogging in 1996. Well, your, your first blog is one of the reasons I, I knew you when I actually finally met you. Right. Spew. And, yeah. So, I, I mean, but I wrote an engine – to do yes. that stuff, in, yeah, in Perl. You built it <clears throat> in Perl. I just I didn't open the source it. code. I, I gave you the source for that. Yeah, you gave me the source. Oh code god, I I'm, I'm sorry. That's embarrassing. <laughs> um, flat text files, pipe the limited, baby. <laughs> um, so I, I did that site, and then I got into the you know I saw what was happening with gray matter and movable type a couple of years later, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I should write a blogging platform. And then I saw they did it, and I'm like, oh, well, there's no use writing one of those. Damn. So, but I followed the, from there. I've been with blogging the whole way forward, yeah. and watching how blogs have gone from it was like the desktop publishing revolution. You know, when anybody got their first Mac and their first laser writer, then you started getting family fucking newsletters, yeah. and the noise just went through the roof. And when people found out they could make money on it, then it just became a shit show. And I think now that it's calming down a bit, like people have gone. But like, how is it back calming down? We see the stats. We we see more and more blogs every fucking day. It's not you really do, but people, but like the good blogs, the people noise. don't stick with. Yeah, you know. So I think I think that since it has gone through that that cleansing period mm-hmm. where people have done it and people have dropped out, you start to see like the talent bubble to the top now. Like people who are, who know how to write concisely. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's stick with the concisely bit and still get their thoughts across. I still think that there's a way to. To do it properly. But are they doing it solo or are they getting hired by an aggregator, a Slate, a Salon, a Huffington Post? I think the good people are. I think they're, I think they're seeing – they see how much work it takes to make them their personal brand, mm-hmm. like you know, bubble up through the ranks. And then they get tired and they're like, oh my god, I can just get paid. I can go write for Gizmodo. I can go write for you know, any of these you know, big conglomerates who took all the blogging and made it. Your yeah. yeah. 
And those places are just they're sla- they're uh, sweatshops. They are sweatshops. Yeah, I was going to say, are they paying well? They're paying, <laughs> but you have to do like fifteen twenty dot, posts dot, a dot. day because it's all about ad ad revenue and stuff right. like that. That's where I'm thinking. If you're passionate about a subject, do it yourself. Stay with it, stick with it, and you can still like create your brand, your audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and going back to what we were talking about before with Merlin Mann, I think he has done a fantastic job of what he did. It's starting out with 43 folders, right. building up that whole like you know, uh, kind of life hacking, but productivity hacking was his thing. And now he, you know, he's a speaker, he's a podcaster. Didn't really get to the book part because he kind of dropped that one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he's, but he's made he's made a, but he's made a brand out of himself by doing the thing that he liked to do. Right. And I think that there's still room for that out there, but you just have to be dedicated for, dedicated to it. Is that what we're doing here? Are we dedicated to this? We seem to be pretty into it. Well, I've been driving my ass out here for two months, so we better be. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I, I I get what you're saying, and I, I totally understand and agree with the the. You know, if you're passionate about something, you stick with it and you fucking do it, and and maybe you should do it yourself and not sell out to these horrible sites that'll pay you pennies, if anything. I mean, we've we've both you and I have had experience with this, where we get paid next to nothing to do something really cool for somebody else. Um, I just don't get how you get the audience, and this is something you and I are dealing with now with this podcast. We're throwing it out there and like, how do we get an audience? Yeah. How, how do you build it? And how do you, it's great if people listen, but how do you get people to like engage and give you a good review? Or, you know, do you put a donate button up and say, give us a buck or two, or you do the Adam Carolla, please click on the amazon.com through the way through. And, and how do you make a living being creative anymore? Well, I think you also, I think you have to have income already. This, yeah. is, this is a passion project. It's always a secondary thing. This is a passion project. Yeah. And I think that if somebody's going to go do a blog or a podcast, it needs to be a passion project first. Right. Then you prove your passion, you prove you can make money at it, and then you transfer. You don't get on the you don't jump off the train until the next train's coming. <laughs> Seriously. You don't want to be standing at the platform with your thumb up your ass going, Anybody got some spare change? No, so can, you can do that when you're younger. When you're younger, but we're not younger. That's how I left off the train and started my own company. Yeah, it, but now I, I wouldn't do that. No, you can't do that now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have responsibilities. And, yeah, yeah, and and I got a nut to make. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got. I mean, I got dead out the wazoo. I can't not make money. Yeah. So, but that's why you make money. Do your passion, and then if you can transfer. Right. But I think, and especially with people our age, we've got experience. We know things that people might want to know. Right. You know? And I think if you're going to start a blog, you don't start a blog about crocheting if you don't like crocheting, you know? You, you, you're not <laughs> no, you going you're not to, what, yeah. you're not going through the Google like what's hot on AdSense this week and what am I going to get? It, I'm going to start a mesothelioma blog, you know? No, it has to be something <clears throat> you live, breathe and eat. Yeah. You need to be able to talk it back and forward, talk about it 24/7, talk be able to talk about it for 30 minutes straight, yeah. minimum. Minimum. You mm-hmm. have to be able to do a TED Talk on it. Well, I've seen some pretty bad TED Talks. Well, but. Yeah, there's been a lot of bad TED Talks. Oh, um, I, I, they finally changed their intro. I didn't. I've never been to TED, but I, uh, I actually, because I was in Long Beach, I almost bounced off of Al Gore coming out of my favorite local. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, so yeah, I, st- I still think there's ways to to make money if as a as as an individual with an idea and something to say. So, and, but, but you're going to rely on finding an audience, or an audience finding you, basically. You don't. No, you you hump it. You got to hump. You got to hump it. Yes. I mean, I've been humping it with this thing. I've been posting. I've been you know right. talking to people. You, you use your connections. You talk to people who right. have like minds and and you network. You know, it's it's a slog. But the money is through affiliates and hopefully that's how you start it. Advertising. Yeah, that's how you start right. it. And then once you get an, a big enough audience, then you do direct sales. I know I. I used to be in Federated Media, the one of the early blog uh, ad networks. I just went to Shadow Stevens and Federated, but you didn't grow up in Southern California. No, I didn't. Southern no. California okay. people will get that one. So, <laughs> it, being in Federated Media, yes. they, you know, it was all it was an entire blog network, and we ended up dealing with them in a different way because they would always just sell ads to the big blogs, right? Which were back then Dig and Boing Boing, yeah, and it came out of Boing Boing, but. In those meetings, I got to hang out with Merlin, 
And what Merlin did was genius. He would it's it's kind of the same thing John Gruber does now. Basically sponsors the full text RSS feed. Right. So if you want to get my show or get my get my content through RSS without having to come to the site, see any ads, you know, this person's going to sponsor it. Right. And that's how he started making a ton of money in doing it himself. He went to uh, Office Depot or Staples or something and got them to sponsor it and eventually left the, the ad network and just did direct ad sales, made a boatload of money. Right. So once you get an audience, then you have power. Once you have the power, then you can determine how you're going to make money. You know? Right. Okay. Very I think interesting. I th- I, I'm, I'm a little fascinated, and we can probably talk about this a lot more, but um, it's uh, time for us to move on to the next segment. And I want to talk about one of the big blogs out there. Uh, you want to talk about the... Uh, I want to talk about Ariana Huffington's little baby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so I mean, I, I hope that was interesting. At least, I mean, it wasn't really about you, um, paid freemium free, but it, you know, it. it I want to. I w- just want to make sure that people know that there are still ways to make money out there that you aren't made me douchey. Question some of the paradigms. You know? Okay. And I'm actually thinking about it right now, and I think we might have to cycle back to this. At some oh my point. god! I made Brian think. <laughs> that was <laughs> okay. Out. Out. If you'll all gather close around the phonograph and listen carefully, I'll tell you how we're going to have a whole lot of fun. And we were halfway through a segment, and of course my business partner, Wendy Marvel, decided to show up at that point. And I said, text, and she called. (laughs) So this is my business partner, Wendy Marvel. Uh, We're Slender Fungus. Hi. And Mark. (laughs) Hi, guys. <laughs> we came bearing gifts, though. Yes. So Mark and Wendy run Flipbook It, which I think you've heard us talk about before. And uh, Jason hasn't seen Wendy for an awful long time. No, it's been a while. Jason. It's been a long time. I, I've been listening to your podcast. And? and I was so excited to come on. You mean the podcast you're on right now? Yes, okay. yes. That's kind of meta. Well, I, I was so excited to come over and see the drunk boys perform. So Hey, now. <laughs> Tipsy, not drunk. <laughs> but yes, we brought um, Jason something. We brought we brought you a flip bucket. Okay, I'm I'm excited to see it. I haven't seen one in person yet. So show me what's it do. Well, uh, I'm going to describe it for everyone who can't see it. This is <laughs> I mean, that, that would be everyone. This is a podcast. <laughs> that would be everyone. That would be everyone. <laughs> that would be everyone. This is a, this is a this is sort of an adaptation of some artwork we did, and it's based on like those train station signs. Those that's called a split flap display. And like the time when it flips over, yeah. like nine, eight, five, oh, yeah, eight, oh, five, old, eight, oh, seven. Yeah, old fashioned one. Right. And we so we, we set it up so that you could put graphics in it. Right. And so we made this toy, and it's got a little hand crank. I'm going to crank it. Here we go. We're not farting. That's the actual. That's the actual yeah, that's, device. That's, that's like a horse galloping right now. Is that saying. is that Edward Moybridge? That is. It Moybridge. is. Yes. Oh, look at oh, look at the knowledge it. being dropped. Hey, photography, man. That, that now, was my thing. You guys also did this on on Kickstarter. Yes. Which I spent the entire last episode shitting on. So yes, that was exciting. <laughs> Thank you for um, mentioning us. <laughs> yeah, so how, how was the the Kickstarter experience? Actually, we could write a book. <laughs> yeah, we we really loved it, but at the same time, there were so many pitfalls that we had no idea. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go on a lecture series for it. <laughs> okay. Well, we'd love to have you back on to actually talk yeah, about your Kickstarter. Yeah, let's do a full segment okay. with you guys. Yeah, at okay. some point. But uh, right now, this is just an ad. Oh, well, yeah. if it's an ad, you got it. So why don't you plug your stuff? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'd love you guys to go and uh, take a look at these at flipbucket.com. And uh, they're pretty cool. I, I wasn't sure, like, how we would fit into your podcast, but then I realized this is kind of cool, a cool product. And mm-hmm. I, are, you, yeah. uh, are you on you Facebook, guys, too? Uh, yes, we are. Do you know... You don't. <laughs> 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 so where are on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Flipbook it. I believe. Flip yes. Uh, Twitter? Uh, yes. Okay. It's a play on words. Flipbook and kit or flipbook it. Right. Yeah. So. Or just check our show notes too. We're going to have links. I got to say, this is the first time I've seen one in person because I was following the Kickstarter campaign. This is very cool. Oh, I really nice like it. Nice. It is very cool. Yeah. I went downstairs as well and um, it's it's a cool gift. And, it's, it's, yeah. and you put it's it together a, yourself. I put it together myself, although... Um, I was a little frustrated at the point because I had extra bits 
which oh. you didn't have in your documentation at the time, but I hope you fixed that. Yeah, so. No, we, we added the extra bits because so, awesome. people drop bits yes. when they're making stuff. See, if oh. he had did that, then we'd all be much happier <laughs> yeah. people, like ha- much happier Farfig Nugan type of <laughs> consumers. <laughs> because I do have a bed called the Farfig oh. Nugan, and, and I ran out of screws in the middle, so oh. I appreciate you adding extra parts. I almost forgot, for- Jason. This, you can add your own images to. I can, I can put my own stuff in. Yeah. I'll so explain that really quick. Can, actually, this is one of the coolest parts. Yeah. Um, so we built software that will la- enable you to upload um, video from your phone or no way. device. Okay. Or even just images, like 24 images. And it'll take that video and create 24 images for you so that you can download it, print it at home, and put your own images in. Awesome. Assuming I can't, I can't wait to try that. Work correctly. My printer's broken, but I'll get one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Kinko's. So put your own <laughs> photography in there. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although I do like the Edward Moybird stuff. Look that's for the, the, uh, the Grumpy team. Old Geek uh, exclusive flip book <laughs> coming soon with a wonderful images of Jason and I. Oh, yes. that'd be great. <laughs> what, drinking beer. Drinking beer. Yeah, so you can or watch maybe just beer. Drink <laughs> over and over. <laughs> <laughs> you guys on a, on a flip book it's Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys came in and let's yeah. definitely have you guys in because I'd love to talk to you about your Kickstarter experiences soon. Oh, we would love to tell you. Okay. Right, great seeing you guys. Bye. Take care, guys. A knife and a fork, a bottle and a cord. That's the way to spill New York. I want to throw something out there to anybody that's actually listening because most of you are probably relatively tech savvy. Maybe you run your own Facebook pages. I have two questions here, both related to Facebook. Uh, if you have the Facebook pages app on your cell phone, do you have that, Jason? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, if you're logged out of it, why does it still give you updates? Because it's probably using your system Facebook login and keeps you perpetually logged in. So there's no differentiation between your personal account and your professional work life on Facebook. I have a problem with that. But it's the pages that you, as a Facebook user, admin. Yes, but I've logged out of my Facebook pages account. It is logged out. Why is it giving me updates? It's logged out in the pages app. annoys me. No, it's... Yeah, Facebook pages app, logged out. But... You're still getting... I'm still getting updates from the Facebook Pages app on my pages, even though I'm logged out of the Facebook Pages app. I, Facebook, can, I can explain this from a technical perspective, I believe. Oh, I can too. Yeah, it's because it's a push service. Somebody forgot no, it's, no, it's a push to service. put in a little switch there saying, are you logged out? No, because they're, the way push notifications work are different from... You get push notifications from Facebook from their server. You should not get push notifications from any app if you're logged out of it. No, because you've already logged in and said, I want push notifications. Hmm, is there so it take, No, it takes your device ID, your yeah. Facebook ID, marries the two. When something happens on their side, they say, oh, okay, we've got a device ID. We've got a Facebook ID for the, the user. We've got a pages ID. There is new activity. Push the update to them. Okay. Jason is now it doesn't matter if you, it. it doesn't matter if you're logged out because it doesn't when you log out it doesn't disassociate your Facebook ID and your device ID from the push notifications because you've already said I want push notifications it's a completely separate subsystem okay you've explained it but it's still wrong okay well then call Mark <laughs> all right unless he's killing and goat my in his second backyard. my second throw out question about Facebook is I want People to, if you guys have experienced this, because I have every single time, every single time that Facebook pushes a new iPhone app update, sorry, I'm not on, you know, Android or whatever. I don't know how that works. I have an iPhone. Every time that Facebook pushes out a new iPhone update for their app, privacy settings get reset. I'm 99% positive about this. I'm, so screen, next so, time they push an update. I want to know if everybody else out there has experienced the same thing. Please let us know. And I'm going to start taking screencasts. Yeah, next time they yeah. push an update, you see it in your little app yes. store thing. Go and take a screenshot of your uh, privacy settings yeah. before and one after. Yeah. And there you've got your proof. Okay. We're so if, start if you to guys, yeah, if you guys see an update come through, do the same thing. Send it to us. We're, we'll blow this shit wide open. Yeah, we want to talk about this because it's been really annoying. So speaking of annoying, let's go back to our main topic, blogs. Let's talk about one of the biggest blogs out there, the Huffington Post. Okay. It is a blog, right? It is. It runs on a blog software. A blog software? <laughs> one of them. I don't know which one. I think. Okay. I didn't do the research on it, but I mean, I know they started with WordPress. Okay. Like Huffington Post originally started to run on WordPress. And it was basically a blog. 
and it was a blog that ran updates and news uh, from Ariana's perspective, plus a bunch of her friends. And I used to love the site. I love Ariana Huffington. I can't get enough of her accent. I'm like Bill Maher. I just totally want to bang the crap out of her. Darling. Darling. I, whatever. I love her books. I love How to Overthrow the Government. I love Pigs at the Trow. I love Fanatics and Fools. I loved the Huffington Post for years and years and years. I bring up the Huffington Post right now. Let's see. Most popular. Emma Watson's sexiest photo shoot yet. Hmm. Hot. Courtney Cox smiles without makeup. Kim Kardashian's dress pushes limits. It's official. Something about fucking Miley Cyrus. And let's go down the other side. Uh, let's see. Howard Feynman. Okay, he's a good writer. There's a lot of good writers, but... Oh, Marlo Thomas. Award-winning actress. Do I care what she thinks? Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, Huffington Post has become this fucking wasteland of a news aggregator that... Basically focuses on tits but and it's, it's celebrity not, opinions. It's not technically an aggregator because an aggregator pulls things in from other sources. Right. It's that's her source. Well, she had no. Uh, she has her own writers, but it, it's also an aggregator. They do pull in news stories from other places. They do. They just okay. tag their own name on it and have a little like two sentence commentary. That, that's skeezy. Yeah, it's totally skeezy. Yeah. So I'm loathing the Huffington Post now. I've never gotten into the Huffington Even I go Post. There every single day. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I've never really checked it out that much because when when we started with Metblogs, we had a contrary type of setup. Right. So if I'd have gone with my original idea for my blog network, I would have been Ariana first. So I, I have this deep seated uh, envy of what she's pulled off. And well, she's making a ton of money. She made three hundred million dollars. Yes. And how much of that did she give back to the writers? I'm assuming they're not getting paid well. Well, it was a big controversy, but I, I don't know if they ever got anything back. I don't know so. the exact stats on that, so we'll yeah. put that in the show notes. We'll definitely okay. Google that. But, I mean, for me, it's just disappointing because the, the launch of the Huffington Post was supposed to be about this is the new media. Again, Amanda Palmer. This is the new music. This is the new media. And it becomes... Fucking tits and ass. Well, it's owned by AOL tits now. Tits and ass and stupid fucking celebrity opinions again and again and again. But that sells eyeballs. But that's the only thing that people want to look at. Yeah, I mean, have you looked at the stats from before and now? Are they getting more traffic now? Oh, yeah. I mean, for, just from... Everything Post I mean, is, is ramping up to be one of the biggest viewed sites on the internet. It's, it's getting up there because they're selling lowest common denominator. And it's disappointing. And Ariana has become disappointing. She used to be amazing. Like when she used to be on the old Bill Maher show, the Channel 7 Politically, politically incorrect, incorrect, yeah. That got canceled because he made an unfortunate comment, which wasn't wrong, about 9 11. Oh, what, um, what, what did he say? He said something about you can say anything you want about the people that brought down those towers, but they were not pussies. Well, that's actually pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it takes a lot of balls yeah. to kill yourself for something. Yeah. I mean, and that's I, all he said. Okay. So, yes, I, I just a side note. I hate Bill Maher, but we'll go back I, to him. I love him. real time with Bill Maher. And let okay. me bring it back to Ariana go, Huffington. Go back to Ariana. And again, I used to love her. All of her books were fantastic. All of her TV appearances used to be fantastic. Now, every time she shows up on Bill Maher's show or wherever, it's, well, if you saw on the Huffington Post. Oh, if you looked at the Huffington Post. She, now, she doesn't even have any content anymore. All she does is drive people to her site, which... She's, is what you think should happen if you're going to run a blog. Well, she's a PR machine. I mean, right. that's... But and, there's no content. Well, there's a lot of it's, content. It's it push, just has push, no substance. Push, 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 It's no substance. It's, right. it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's snack food. She's a smart girl, very funny, incredibly intelligent. And this is what she's become. She's PRing a bullshit machine that has Kim Kardashian's fat ass on it. Well, I mean, I, she did us a solid one time back in the day, as I just got to say. Okay. Um, when I worked at Technorati, mm -hmm. we, we, were, we did some, um, some political stuff before I got there. They did a whole uh, thing with the RNC and the DNC, I guess, for the uh, whatever that shit is. I don't follow right. politics. But um, so she was friends with the owner. And we had worked for two months on this giant relaunch. And we had this little intern that came in. His little name was Ryan King who's now like one of the head engineers at, at Twitter on the API. Um, I don't know if he's still there, but he's, he's a great little kid. And he was in charge of the profanity filter to say for the top search terms, take out anything with this list of words with, you know, fuck shit, this, whatever. Right. 
And right before we launched, he made a little change, checked it in, which swapped the arrays with the <laughs> filter words and the unfiltered words. So basically, the top search terms were fuck shit, piss, you know. It, and I think the top one was fuck George Bush because this is back in George <laughs> Bush days. And uh, Dave, get, we're sitting in the conference room, we're round table and do, going through because we had performance issues and all this stuff. And Dave gets a call and he's like, hello? What? What? <laughs> Ryan! <laughs> And it, is, it was Ariana Huffington calling him saying, darling, your site says fuck shit piss. <laughs> what, what is wrong? <laughs> so Ariana Huffington is the one that, that, that alerted us to our, our faux pas. Right. And at that point, we were so exhausted from busting our ass for two months that, I mean, we, we were crying. We were laughing so hard. We called Ryan <laughs> and he fixed it. But thank you, Ariana, for that. I have to give her props. Well, there you go. I, and I still think she's a wonderful person. I just i am not a fan of our big site. Yeah. So you have something that you love? No, actually, now that you brought it up, I'm going to talk about something I really don't like. Okay. We're which, switching. Yeah. Bill Maher. I fucking hate Bill Maher. I love Bill Maher. Well, Bill, the problem with Bill Maher is he's a lazy intellectual. I look at Jon Stewart. You could, Jon Stewart, you can put him in a room with anybody, and he's knowledgeable. He can argue thoughtfully. But you put Bill Maher in a room with somebody... And he just he goes, finds the black chick and tries to bang her. He, no, he just goes back to standard rhetoric. I don't like God because God doesn't exist and you're an idiot. He doesn't, he doesn't have a okay. thoughtful argument for both, most of his – any of his positions. Both of them have staves that write their positions and do their research for them. Staves? Are those like staves? Staves. Like, like, like in the old days with the sticks? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> We're three beers in. It's the third segment. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I get it. I mean I – well, the but Bill I, don't, I don't see a difference between Bill Maher or Jon Stewart. They no. have staffs that write their positions, that go through the news, that bring it to them. I don't think Bill Maher is an idiot. I think he's more focused on getting stoned and fucking a black chick. Here's the deal, though. It's not about the, the canned pieces. You look at Jon Stewart in an interview. Yes. He, is, he can debate. He can talk on all the points. And he's knowledgeable. It, John Stu- or, I mean, uh, Bill Maher in a debate is... A rock. He okay. doesn't. He doesn't have the wherewithal to rebut something from an intellectual point of view. But do you just like his show? I actually like his show. I just wish he was fucking smarter. Well, that's fair it, enough. Yeah. I mean, I think his show is great because it it he brings in some of the most interesting people that never get airtime anywhere. Like who? By far, he'll bring in uh, Salman Rushdie. When's the last time you saw Salman Rushdie interviewed oh, on okay. a live TV show? Well, the, the whole, in real the, time. But the thought was over. Oh, sorry. The thought was real over. time. I did a plug for Bill Maher. Oh, yeah. US money. No, the thought was over, though. They, they, they pulled the thought. Well, well yeah, you know. but still, nobody brings him on. He's an interesting guy. Mm-hmm. He brings in a lot of interesting people and has really straightforward discussions with them. Most of the time I see it, it's a loaded a lot, panel. I think the interviews on, on Real Time with Bill Maher are far better than what Jon Stewart does. I agree with you. I think Jon Stewart is a way more intellectual person and funny person and smart person in person. But I actually like Bill Maher's show better than I like The Daily Show. I don't. Yeah, see, because with, with Bill Maher, it just comes down to him shutting people down saying, you're an idiot. You're an idiot for taking this position because I'm. I know everything, and it's like explain your position. Take because, a, take a stance. You know, he does that a lot, but the panel often overrules him, and and they start to talk about things that are interesting. But I mean, even the one on ones when he's talking to the screen with the you know with his remote guests, it's it. I don't know. Okay, we can we can disagree on this one. I just you know you brought you brought up Bill Maher, and he's one of my my touchstones because. Right. I want to like him. I want him to do more research, and I want him to be fucking smarter and stand by the positions that I agree with too: atheism, you know, free drug use, whatever. Well, he is being our, being our human. big atheist, you know, he's the one running the flag right now. Oh, Dawkins! He, Dawkins is the well. It was Hitchens, my favorite guy. Hitchens my, is now dead. I know he's yes. my favorite guy in the world. Yeah. I used to watch him on bullshit, and he he was the only guy that would sit there with his scotch and, scotch on the rocks yeah. and get fucked up and well, tell he's you my hero. Yeah. All he did was get drunk and tell you why you're wrong about everything and then give you a reason why. Yeah, the that Mother you Teresa could not even argue with. The Mother Teresa stuff was genius. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. I just I just want Bill Maher to just do his fucking homework. Well, let's hope his show gets better. I mean, I urge everybody to watch it because I think it's fantastic. It's it's uh, my favorite thing to do on Friday night is to watch it. I love it. 
I think it's fantastic. I've given up on The Daily Show. I think Jon Stewart's funny, but I don't want a funny wrap-up for news. I want something more in-depth, and you get that from Bill Maher. I think you get it from Jon Stewart, but he wraps it in comedy. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Well, that's it. That's it. Next podcast. <laughs> yep. Um, what are we talking about next week? Oh, I know what we're talking about. Oh, Our favorite topic. What? Social media. Oh, shit. We're, we're, we're going down week. the rabbit hole. This is when I'm going to get fired by everyone in my mind. Uh, me first. Okay, last one to kill a bad guy buys the beer. We're driving to Florida.